Welcome to today's session of the AWS Startup Showcase featuring Cordial. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. I've got two guests with me here today. Christy Parrish is here. She's the Director of Client Success at Cordial. And Haley Pettit is here as well. She's the CRM Manager at Nurex. Ladies, welcome to today's session. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Excited about this conversation. You're going to be talking about personalizing at scale. And we're going to look learn how Nurex is reinventing the digital patient experience, such a relevant topic. Let's go ahead and get started so the audience understands about each of your companies. Chrissy, we'll start with you. Give us an overview of Cordial and how you help customers. Absolutely. So Cordial is a cross-channel messaging and data platform. So our clients collect um, can collect all of their unstructured customer and business data from wherever it lives in their tech stack and really use that data to build audience segments uh, discover trends and insights and automate super hyper personalized customer experiences at enterprise scale. So as someone who essentially grew up in the legacy email space, I actually worked at a legacy ESP for about 13 years. I see Cordial as a radical shift from heavy cumbersome data processes and the need for lengthy delays and heavy lift to send messages. We're, at, we're activating massive amounts of consumer and business data kind of up to the second, regardless of its underlying structure or format. And we're making that available across any outbound channel to deliver these highly personalized messaging. So I think it's important to also mention that Cordial is more than just a platform. Um, all of that power, all of the AWS powered power is backed by some of the best innovators and support teams in the industry. So I'm especially proud of how we partner with our clients like Nurex to help them build and execute um, on their business goals. We're enabling some of the best brands out there. Uh, you know, we have Eddie Bauer, we have 1-800-CONTACTS, uh, Revolve Clothing. Uh, we're really bringing them agility and a solid marriage of art and science. Oh, I like that, a marriage of art and science, especially as we become more demanding as consumers, whether we're consuming something in a retail environment or we're patients, we want the information to be really, as you said, hyper-personalized. Mm -hmm. So Haley, let's talk about Nurex. This is a very interesting brand. And I think it's very fitting that we're talking about this during Women's History Month as well. Give us an overview of what you guys do and why you're so radically novel. Yeah, so Nurex is a telehealth company and we are really focused on sensitive health needs. We're really a leader in the birth control space right now. Um, so we prescribe and deliver online directly to our patients. Uh, so we offer not only birth control, but STI home testing, uh, PrEP, which is HIV preventative medication. Uh, we just launched acne treatment, migraine treatment. So uh, really expanding within the healthcare space. I think what really sets Nurex apart is our one-to-one -one, uh, relationship with our uh, providers, um, with our patients. And um, really at our core, we really believe that healthcare should be accessible and affordable to everyone, um, no matter what their circumstances. So um, yeah, it's a very exciting space to be in and uh, definitely be, being data-driven, uh, it really impacts that patient care and helps us uh, really care for patients in a, a really innovative, exciting way. It's very innovative. Chrissy, let's talk a little bit about some of the other customers. We're going to dig into the Nurex story, but talk to me about some of the other customers that Cordial helps in other industries, for example. You mentioned a few, but let's go kind of open that up. Yeah, Cordial really is helping a lot um, of customers really in the retail space. So retail is, is a, a large focus in e-com for us. Um, what really kind of stands out to me about Cordial with retail um, and, and maybe even some of our publishing clients is our ability to sort of take that um, data agnostic approach. Data can come from anywhere, um, from anywhere in their tech stack and come into Cordial. And then we're, we're really focused on making it accessible to them and meaningful for their outbound communications. So um, any channel, anytime, kind of uh, if they want to do direct mail, Facebook audiences, we really are able to um, bring in that data and look at their business goals, look at what they're trying to achieve inside of their vertical, and then make that data powerful for them, not only for just talking to their customers and growing things like revenue per email or their lifetime value for their customers, but really uh, bringing it into their insights. And, and one of the things that I think Nurex is doing really well is using that data, using those insights to kind of 
feed the next evolution of their messaging program. So that's a lot of what we're doing for our, you know, for our clients and, and having some really stellar successes across verticals. So the, the data explosion, we, ha we have to address that. It's something that we're also helping to create as consumers, as patients, et cetera. But we also have this demand, like I said earlier, we want information on any channel. It's great if a brand can come to the channel that we want, that's, that's rare to get that. But creating a data-driven customer experience is a really challenging thing to accomplish. Chrissy, how, do you, how does Cordial help your customers in any industry actually do that? And in a timely fashion so that the messages are relevant and personalized. Yeah, so I think in, in this case and in, in many cases, the key to creating that great customer experience is really using that data with empathy. Uh, being able to not just go out and check a box, um, look for the next logical data, data point, but really grabbing that data, making it into maybe thoughtful cohorts, thoughtful automated customer journeys, and using that not just to blast out marketing messages, but to potentially, um, and, and like in the case of Nurex, address pain points or gaps in the knowledge on the on the on the behalf of the consumer consumer, or um, even you know for retail holds in the buying cycle, right? So are they going to buy again soon? Um, what is what is going to happen next? So this will really kind of make or break the customer experience. And in this case um, with Nurex, it's the patient experience with the brand. So we want to be of the moment. Uh, we don't want to send out something that's, you know, um, wrong last week's news or something like that, or push them beyond where they're at in their, in their cycle. So uh, being able to have kind of that empathy with the data and looking at it from a holistic standpoint, I think is, is kind of the, the data magic that Cordial is able to bring. That the empathy point is provocative. How do you look at data with empathy and deliver those customer experiences that that really that so that that customer actually feels the empathy coming from the vendor? Yeah, I love that point as well. Uh, especially in the healthcare space, it's it's all about patient care and understanding how each patient is different and their needs. And so uh, utilizing the data, understanding where they are in their, their journey with healthcare is so important and Cordial really does allow us to do that. Um, and we, we use that data to craft really empathetic messaging. So we, you know, we know where they are in the flow. We know what pain points they, they may have or what questions they may have at that stage. And so addressing those head on is super important and is like a key uh, key strategic goal uh, decision that we've made and everything that we do. Uh, yeah, I, I also think, you know, there's a lot of stigma in the healthcare space. And so education is also a very key factor uh, around these, these service lines. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really exciting to be able to, you know, have a voice in this space and uh, really educate our patients and address those needs. And meet them where they are. I think, again, as consumers, we're more and more demanding. We can get anything, anywhere, anytime. And we want you to come where we are rather than us have to go to where you are. And certainly with healthcare, that's been a big challenge in the last year or so. But let's let's talk about some of the, Chrissy, I want to get your perspective on some of the, the challenges and the roadblocks when businesses are trying to really form synergistic, empathetic customer relationships at scale. What are some of the roadblocks that you help customers move out of the way. Right, yeah. So every day um, at Cordial, the volume of data increases, right? So uh, data is coming from all places and we're, and we're trying to be smart about using it. Um, we're really working on helping marketers figure out ways to apply insights and meaningful communication strategies to get past this concept of data paralysis, right? It's making that data you know, um, accessible, meaningful, and then giving marketers tools to distill that data into more actionable views so that they can take what, you know, what they have, learn from it, and then again, iterate on it. So building out um, customer attributes, cohorts, um, you know, different ways of, of slicing the data to make sure that it's as, as meaningful as possible for their program. And then we partner that with offline insights. So best practices, uh, program strategy, trends, to make that, to push that distilled data even farther um, on behalf of their marketing programs. 
You mentioned data paralysis, and that's certainly something that no business, especially in the last year as we've seen uh, demand for real time is no longer a nice to have, it's really table stakes. But that data paralysis can be a big challenge to, in terms of how to work around it. How do you pull uh, actionable nuggets from the data to make decisions in the fast enough time that are still relevant for your audience? Haley, walk us through how you're doing that at Nurex. Yeah, I, you know, at Nurex, we definitely stay focused on the patient. And when you have that clarity, it's easier to navigate through the data and um, not getting caught up in that paralysis. I mean, I'm not saying we're perfect because I've definitely experienced that where there's just so much information that you have. And uh, if you were to touch on each point, a lot of your automations would get really thin. So using the data is smart. Uh, and within bodies, but also your creative is really important. Uh, another roadblock that we've had is, uh, you know, when you have increasing demand, when you're at scale, really automating um, some of the one-to-one -one interactions that you have is so important and digging out, down into what data is important to automate those interactions. And I think a great example for us is we launched a post-prescription flow. So, um, you know, our patients are notified when their prescription is on their way. Uh, and our providers told us, you know, like clockwork, we get these questions once patients are notified. And so we validated that in the data. We uh, put that data within Cordial and we were able to build out a really successful automation that proactively addressed those questions. And we saw a direct uh, decrease in those types of tickets to our providers asking those questions. So yeah, that was really great to see too. So taking a look at the data and seeing like the most common questions for certain types of prescriptions mm -hmm. that providers are getting, which I imagine takes time from the provider being able to treat somebody else, condensing those down, automating those, and then you're freeing up the provider as yeah. well, because you know the common questions that get asked. So in terms of the patient, then they sort of proactively get messages about questions that they might have. Yes, so more specifically, uh, how to start their medication uh, and then also some of the side effects that may be uh, involved with that medication and what would be normal versus abnormal and what you should pay attention to. Uh, so just putting that in a very user-friendly format within an email uh, worked really well in uh, addressing that, that question that our providers were taking a lot of time to answer. So Haley, so a, a prospective patient would go online, order what they want prescription-wise, gets to a provider, they write the prescription, and then is that sent to the patient's home? So there's no like physical interaction? It's all digital? Correct, yeah, it's all digital. We have our own pharmacy that uh, fills the prescriptions and sends it right to your door. Yeah. Excellent, uh, on demand. <laughs> yeah. So if we look at the last year, there's been so many challenges, too many to count, but I'm wondering how, as the channels expand, you know, we're all dependent on, on text and email and mobile. As the channels expand, Christy, how does the cordial data architecture allow customers like Nurex to be able to, uh, to flex as data sources expand, as data volumes grow, as channels expand? How do, how do you allow them to have an architecture that will allow them to grow and continue to scale? Yeah, it's it's really important to us that we be able to bring in um, all of this data. And then, like you said, a really critical point to Nurex and to a lot of our customers and our clients is, hey, we want to send it out across any channel, right? So uh, Nurex, uh, Haley didn't mention, but they're, they're sending um, not only prescription um, information and, and follow-up out via um, SMS or, or MMS marketing, they're also sending marketing messages too. So they're able to really leverage um, what we've built in terms of making that data accessible um, through, you know, all of these different channels. It's channel agnostic at this point. So leveraging all of the, the, the bells and whistles of the platform and also then using their data smartly, um, that's really where the clients are seeing, you know, a huge lift with the Cordial platform. Um, they're able to visualize their data, see it, um, access it, even manipulate it where in, you know, in a legacy ESP, it's it's very limited in terms of manipulating data, um, 
aggregating it, looking at it from different angles, and then being able to actually make it useful inside the platform for them. And Haley, question for you. We talked about that automated post-prescription workflow a second ago. You also talked about this, you know, each patient, patient's journey being unique, wanting to deliver personalized, hyper-personalized, actually is the word, uh, Chrissy, that you use. How does Cordial's platform allow you to respect the individual patient journey, customize it, and also do automation at scale? Yeah, I think, you know, with Cordial, it's, it's an incredible platform. We're able to pull in data from multiple sources. And then it's very user-friendly in the way that you can interact with that data and uh, manipulate it and really get at the cohorts that you are trying to reach. Uh, I think it's it's really a special platform, honestly. I think not. I haven't seen a lot of other uh, uh, platforms like this where it does make it really uh, visually accessible to a brand or a, you know, a company. Um, yeah. Something Chrissy that I wanted to ask you, I saw in the marketing messaging that what you're aiming to do is making marketing personal, not personalized. And I thought, Ooh, that's an interesting statement. What's the difference between personal and personalized from Cordial's point of view? Yeah, it really goes back to that whole checking a box, right? So the traditional way of doing outbound communications marketing, even going back to the days of direct mail, is to sort of wedge our customers into little boxes or even big boxes and then send out messages that we think will resonate with them. Uh, now we're really looking at it in real time as the messages are being generated and sent out of a platform where at the moment of send, we're reading some, some signals that the customer is giving us, like what did they do on a website or did they respond to an SMS message or a text message? Um, and at the moment of send, we're actually sending content that is, is relevant at that, at that time. Um, very, it's vastly different from the way that we've traditionally marketed um, in outbound communications across all channels. So looking at um, real time, you know, Haley mentioned the, that she can visualize. We have a we have a feature called Orchestration Builder that allows Haley to um, come in and say, okay, based on these signals or triggers, I want to send this message to these users or these patients, but they're but they need to be in that moment ready for that message. Or she could say, if they're not ready for that message, let's skip them and come back to them later and be able to really kind of narrow in and get super personal um, with those with those messages. Nurex is incredible. Uh, the way that they've used the platform and the way that she's built out these, these orchestrations, um, all, all credit to Haley on this, the, uh, the way that she's um, smartly used her tools is, is not only effective, but it's sort of revolutionary. Um, just in the way that she's able to find the right message at the right time. Um, and, you know, in email, we've said that for years, right? Right message at the right time. But really, we haven't said, let's make it personal. Let's use the data that we just got 10 seconds ago and send the message now. So it's been great. Yeah, that's a game changer. Using the, the, the data that we just got about this person. Yep. Speaking of that on-demand culture, that that's a game changer for retail, for healthcare, to be able to tune that in an automated way I imagine the, the campaign ROI numbers, Christy, are probably pretty much off the wall for your customers. In a lot of cases, they are. Yeah, they're doing really well. Uh, they're, they're, they're leveraging data in ways that I've never seen before. We've got some, some clients who um, are looking across periods of time, um, especially in retail, looking across periods of time at their customers' behavior and then um, looking for ways to communicate them when maybe there wouldn't be a way to communicate with them that day. So it's the day that they send out a sale, but they're a person who doesn't like sales or doesn't respond to sales. So they may send them a different piece of content, something lifestyle um, or you know curated content, that kind of thing. So it's really been, um, it, it has been a bit revolutionary in the way that the, the clients have leveraged the ability to let, you know, to use their data in, in new and kind of special ways. I can only imagine the last year has affected this in a good way because we've become 
even more demanding as a society, everybody everywhere struggling to get certain supplies, for example. But Chrissy, how has the last year affected Cordial's growth and that of your customers? Yeah, so I say this frequently. Um, we have sort of trained a new generation of e-com buyers in the last year. We've taught people how to buy online and that has affected a lot of our brick and mortar clients who also have e-com business. Um, you know, so uh, we have, we have a, a large, a large group of uh, furniture clients. And so they've really seen some incredible success, you know, tr retraining their, their customers to buy large items online. It's not an easy thing, um, but they've really become uh, sort of renegade in the way that they're, they're pushing out messaging and finding the right, the right people to send those to um, these, these new e-com buyers. So it's been really interesting and they, they've, they've come back and invested in technology um, that has enabled them to build trust and um, build out these individualized brand experiences so that they can actually scale those programs. Now this year, you know, as we're reopening, the, sh the strategy is shifting, right? We're looking at, okay, we had an incredible year in some cases last year with e -com. Now we're going to have a store that's opened. How do we make that experience special? How do we continue the dialogue um, with these customers? Such an interesting thing that sounds like it's Cordial has been a facilitator of the many pivots mm -hmm. that so many businesses have needed to go through. And to your point, sort of re-pivoting back towards some mixture of online e-com and in physical retail or store rather experience. It'll be interesting to see how that happens. And then Haley, some pretty big statistics you have to share in terms of some of the things that, that Nurek saw in the last 12 months with respect to use of your platform and personalization. Talk to us about that. Yeah, it's it's been a very interesting uh, year for Nurex for sure. We've seen a 50% increase in our demand for birth control uh, with you know medical providers, brick and mortar medical providers um, having limited capacity. We've been able to really step up and serve these patients and make sure they have their healthcare needs met during this really difficult time. Uh, we've also seen about a 3X increase in our demand for emergency contraception, 130% uh, in STI home test kits. Uh, yeah, it's just across the board, it's been really uh, incredible uh, to be able to really fill this need in such a difficult time. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been exciting. I, I love being able to uh, help serve these patients in, during this time. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that need to do something so personalized during such an incredibly difficult time. That's a really interesting mix there. And congratulations on the success that you guys have had. I want to wrap things up, Christy, with you. Let's just talk a little bit about the Cordial AWS relationship. You guys started on day one back in 2014. Are you built on AWS? Tell me about that. Yeah, so definitely built on AWS. Uh, we leveraged the, the AWS system extensively. And yeah, we started in 2014. I think the founders were looking for, you know, where do we go for stability? Where do we go for efficiency and reliability? And so um, came over to AWS. And since then, we've become um, an advanced tier uh, independent mm -hmm. software vendor. And then um, I think more recently in the last couple of years, we've, we've um, kind of gained a couple of competencies, retail and digital customer experience. So uh, super embedded there. And really, I think AWS can not only contributed to the foundation of the platform, um, it allows us to store and manage that massive volume of customer and business data for our clients and be able to actually house it in the cloud. Really, it, it kind of empowers us to do that, to, to deliver that messaging at scale that we've been talking about. So AWS is an enabler of the way that you help your customers create this personalized experience at scale? Yeah, absolutely. And it really it helps us solve these challenging problems that we have, um, you know, where we're working with a client like Nurex and we have, a, a, you know, a few others where we have to be HIPAA compliant. So we rely on the AWS architecture to not only enable our scalability and reliability, but also with those high security and compliance standards. This is incredibly important to us in servicing our clients. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining me today on the showcase and sharing what your companies are each doing and what they're doing together. 
big changes, big opportunities, and that personalized experience that I think we all crave. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. For my guests, Christy Parrish and Haley Pettit, I'm Lisa Martin. Thanks for watching.